Welcome back to GeForce English Training. I'm Jennifer, and today we're going to learn English with the news. We're going to read a news article about the recent passing of musical icon Tina Turner. And you'll learn lots of natural expressions, advanced grammar, and improve your pronunciation all at the same time while improving your reading skills. Let's get started. Our headline, Tina Turner. Legendary rock and roll singer dies age 83. Let me share some natural expressions that you can use to express emotion after someone dies. Now, these are expressions you would probably use when it's someone that you don't know very personally, like in this situation. You could say, it saddens me to hear that Tina Turner died. Now, you can also take this. Notice it saddens me. Saddens is a simply a way of saying I became sad. It saddens me to hear that Tina Turner died. It's also very common to put our verb die in the present perfect. Tina Turner has died. It saddens me to hear that Tina Turner has died. Now you could also say the news saddens me and the news is that Tina Turner has died. I'm saddened by the news and you can specify what the news is but since we know by the news that Tina Turner has died. So these are some very common expressions that you can use with the word sadden. All three of the slightly different structures are very common. Notice this one is in the passive form. I'm sadden by the news. So that's just something you could say if someone says, wow, did you hear that Tina Turner died? Yeah, I'm saddened by the news. Let's continue on. Before we go on, I just want to point this out. Mm, mm, rock and roll, rock and roll. The N mm stands for and, the word and, but it would not be very common to pronounce it as rock and roll because that sounds like three separate words, rock and roll, rock and roll, mm, rock and roll. Rockin'. So notice this n sound is attached to the word that comes before it. Rockin'. Rock and roll. This is a pronunciation change that you can use when you have and between two or more nouns. For example, I had coffee and cake. Notice that sounds like three separate sounds. Coffee and cake. Or you can pronounce it. I had coffee and cake. Coffee and coffee and cake, coffee and cake. It just really smooths out your pronunciation and it will help you sound more like a native English speaker. Let's continue on. Turner, who initially found fame in a turbulent musical partnership. Let's talk about the word turbulent. Turbulent is an adjective and it means involving a lot of sudden changes, arguments, or even violence. Now, violence, obviously, that's a very negative thing, but it can just be simply a lot of changes, a lot of changes that really impact your your day-to-day -day routine. So let's say you have a routine at work, but then there are all these changes and you get to work and you just, you don't really know what to do because there's been so many changes. You could say, it was a turbulent week. I had a turbulent week at work, for example. I had a turbulent week at work. And then you could say why, because of the new policies. Okay, so maybe there were all these new policies that you had to follow and learn about, and that was why you had a turbulent week. But keep in mind, it, it can also be used in more of a, a violence context. And unfortunately, that's the way that it's being used in this case because 
it, as we'll learn in the article, and as you may know, Tina Turner was in an abusive marriage for m many years. And that turbulent partnership was with her former husband who was abusive. So in this case, it does represent violence, but the context will make it obvious whether we're talking about more violence or simply changes or arguments. Before we move on, all the notes you can find in a free lesson PDF that you can download. The link to download it is right in the description. And you can also go to my website and get this free speaking guide, How to Speak English Fluently and Confidently in Six Easy Steps. This is absolutely free and you can download it from my website as well. And the link to download it is in the description below. Let's continue on. Turner, who initially found fame in a turbulent musical partnership, became one of the biggest acts in the world as a solo artist. Solo, this is also an adjective and it means just one. So you can think of it as alone or as an individual. So if you're a solo artist, it means the band is you. There's no one else in the band. It is just you. So Beyonce, for example, Justin Bieber, they are solo artists. It is just them. But remember, Beyonce used to be with a group called Destiny's Child. So in that case, she wasn't a solo artist because she was part of a group. But then she went out on her own as a solo artist. But we use this in many other contexts, the word solo. You could say, I'm going to the party solo. I went to the meeting solo. It means you went to the party alone without anyone else. You went to the meeting alone. I don't like traveling solo. You don't like tr traveling by yourself alone without anyone else with you. So it is a very common adjective and we use it in a lot of different contexts. Now, everything you're learning here is to help you understand native speakers and to help you sound more fluent and natural when you speak. And that's exactly what we do in the Finally Fluent Academy. This is my premium training program where we study native English speakers on TV, movies, YouTube, and the news. So you can learn the most common phrasal verbs, idioms, and expressions to help you become fluent in as little as 90 days. Plus you'll have me as your personal coach. So you, you can look in the description for a link on how to become a member. Now let's continue on. And one of the defining pop icons of the 1980s. And you can tell this picture because of her big hair is from the 80s. Tina Turner, the pioneering rock and roll star. So let's take a look at pioneering. Pioneering is an adjective and it means being the first to do or use a particular new idea and I can even say new method. So in this case, they're talking about Tina Turner's musical style, the way she presented herself, the way she sang, the way she performed. It was pioneering. She was the first person to perform in such a way as a musician the pioneering rock and roll star who became a pop behemoth. Listen to the pronunciation, behemoth, behemoth. This is an adjective and it represents an extremely large and powerful. So just think of it extremely large and powerful. It could represent a company, organization, or in this case, a person. So we could say, for example, Apple is a behemoth tech company. So you might, you could just say Apple is a behemoth, but you can specify, well, what kind within the tech industry, the tech company, Apple is behemoth tech company. So she became a pop behemoth in the 1980s. 
and she has died age 83 after a long illness. Now here, aged 83, this is more she's died aged 83. It's very common to say, this is more short form, but in a full written sentence, she has died at the age of 83. You could also completely change the sentence structure and say, she was 83 when she died. She was 83 when she died. We use the verb to be in the past simple after someone dies. So of course, when someone is, is alive, you state their age with the verb to be in the present. She is 67. She was 83 when she died. She died at the age of 83. You could also, when people are very old or older, you could say she lived until she was 103. She lived until. But we really only reserve this one for when someone becomes quite old, older than you expect someone to live. In my opinion, 83 isn't that old, especially in this modern day and age. So I probably wouldn't say she lived until she was 83 because 83, in my opinion, doesn't sound very old. So I personally would use this one once someone becomes 95 or older, but that's just my personal opinion based on how long I expect people to live in this day and age. She had suffered ill health in recent years. Notice the past perfect used to describe an action in the past before another past action. Before she died, she had suffered ill health. She had suffered ill health before she died. So notice the past perfect for the older action and the past simple for the newer action, but both of them are in the past. She had suffered ill health before she died. Okay. So we have past perfect. This is our past perfect, and this is our past simple. She had suffered ill health in recent years, being diagnosed with intestinal cancer in 2016 and having a kidney transplant in 2017. Turner affirmed and amplified black women's formative stake in rock and roll. Two useful verbs here to affirm is when you show that something is true. So simply by being a successful musician, a successful black female musician, she showed to the world that black women can be successful musicians. She affirmed the possibility. She affirmed that this is true. So that is the verb affirm. Now amplify in a musical context, amplify means to increase the volume. So right now, if I wanted to amplify my voice, I could turn up the volume on my microphone. I could get a bigger microphone as well to amplify my voice. So it is used in a musical context, but when you amplify something, you can also just increase the size of it or the effect effect of it. So just like when you amplify your voice, it becomes more powerful. When you increase the size of something, it can also become more powerful as well. Turner affirmed and amplified black women's formative stake in rock and roll. Their stake in something just means their participation in it, their involvement in it. So I can write that down for you. Their involvement in rock and roll. Involvement. Or maybe even ownership in rock and roll. That they belong to be there. So if you have 
a business interest in a specific company, you have a stake in that company. So if you own shares of Apple, the company Apple, the behemoth company Apple, you have a stake in Apple. So I have a stake in Apple because I own shares. So I care about the the company's performance. I'm involved in it and I'm technically a partial owner of that company as well. Defining that era of music to the extent that Mick Jagger, who is in the band The Rolling Stones, Mick Jagger, admitted to taking inspiration from her high-kicking, energetic live performances for his stage persona. And when you admit something, you you affirm that something is true. You state that something is true, but usually there is some reluctance, meaning that you don't necessarily want to say that something is true. To, I'll put reluctantly, state that something is true. Now, why would you reluctantly, meaning you don't really want to, because often when we admit something, we admit that we made a mistake, for example. So she admitted that she was the one who lost the document. So at first, when her boss asked who lost the document. She didn't want to say, I lost the document. Why? Because it's a mistake. She could get in trouble, but she eventually stated that it's true. I lost the document, but she did it reluctantly. She didn't initially want to do it because of the negative consequences. Now, in this case, Mick Jagger might not wanted to have admitted this because he's saying that his stage persona, which is how he behaves on stage, he basically copied Tina Turner. It wasn't his own invention. So that could be why they used to use the verb admit. Let's continue on. After two decades, one decade is 10 years. So two decades is <laughs> 20 years because one decade equals 10 years. That's some pretty basic math right there. We did it, guys. After two decades of working with her abusive husband, now this is what we talked about before because her, they described her relationship as turbulent, her turbulent relationship, because it involved violence. When someone is abusive, it means that they are physically violent towards you. So a very negative thing. Working with her abusive husband, Ike Turner, this was her husband, she struck out alone. She struck out alone. That's just another way of saying she she decided to, to leave him and do things solo. Ah, solo. Remember that word? Okay. She struck out alone. She left to go solo. So let's say that you work for an advertisement company and you've gained a lot of skills and experience over the years. You might d decide to strike out alone and start your own company. So you quit your job and you start your own advertisement company. That's how you could strike out alone. So you leave your job to start your own company. She left to go solo. And after a few false starts, became one of the defining pop icons of the 1980s with the album Private Dancer. Her life was chronicled in three memoirs. The verb chronicle is just when you tell the story of, and usually it's in a sequential situation where you start when perhaps she was a child and then they go through her teenage years, her early adult years, and they chronicle her life. So tell the story of her life. 
tell the story of her life from childhood to adulthood. In three memoirs, a biopic, a jukebox musical, and in 2021, the acclaimed documentary film, Tina. Have you seen this film? I have not, and I'm sure it will be very popular now that she has died. In a statement on Wednesday night, her publicist Bernard Doetry said, Tina Turner, the queen of rock and roll, has died peacefully today at the age of 83. Remember, I already shared this expression with you. This is more the full form. Often in articles, they will condense information because they only have a certain number of words that they are allowed to use in, in each situation. So they always try to limit the number of words, which is why they probably use the short form. But for your purposes, I personally would say and write at the age of or the other expressions that I shared at the age of 83 after a long illness in her home in Switzerland with her, the world loses a musical legend and a role model. And this is where you can add your, I'm saddened by the news. I'm saddened that Tina Turner has died. It saddens me to learn that Tina Turner has died. Those expressions I shared at the beginning. And that's the end of our article. Were you a fan of Tina Turner? That's a good expression as well. When you're a fan of someone, it means that you enjoy their work. You appreciate their work. I was a fan of Tina Turner. Of course, you can still be a fan of Tina Turner. I'm a fan of Tina Turner. I'm a huge fan of Tina Turner. You can add an adjective here. Huge fan. Tina, or you could say something like Tina Turner was my, or is, was, is my favorite singer. For example, Tina Turner was my favorite singer in the 80s. And maybe she's still your favorite singer today. And that's why you can use was my favorite singer just because she was more popular in the 80s. But maybe she's still your favorite singer. Tina Turner is my favorite singer. Or you can simply say, I wasn't a huge fan, but I did like her, her music. Like her music. Or you can state a specific song that you liked. I wasn't a huge fan, but I loved her and then whatever song it might be. So these are some expressions that you can use. Or you might say, honestly, I'm not familiar with Tina Turner. Or you could say Tina Turner's music. You could simply say Tina Turner as a person, which also represents her music. Or you can say... Tina Turner's music. Notice the possessive because the music belongs to her. So out of these options, remember huge isn't necessary. I'm a fan of Tina Turner. I'm a huge fan of Tina Turner. So out of these options, which one represents you the most? Feel free to take one of these or put it in your own words and share that in the comment section below. For me, I would say this one. I wasn't a huge fan, to be honest. I don't know many of her songs, but the songs I do know, I did like the songs, but I did like her music. So this would describe me the most. So now what I'll do is I'll go to the beginning of the article and I'll read it from start to finish. And this time you can focus on my pronunciation. So let's do that now. Tina Turner, legendary rock and roll singer, dies aged 83. Turner, who initially found fame in a turbulent musical partnership, became one of the biggest acts in the world as a solo artist and one of the defining pop icons of the 1980s. 
Tina Turner, the pioneering rock and roll star who became a pop behemoth in the 1980s, has died age 83 after a long illness. She had suffered ill health in recent years, being diagnosed with intestinal cancer in 2016 and having a kidney transplant in 2017. Turner affirmed and amplified black women's formative stake in rock and roll, defining that era of music to the extent that Mick Jagger admitted to taking inspiration from her high-kicking, energetic live performances for his stage persona. After two decades of working with her abusive husband, Ike Turner, she struck out alone and, after a few false starts, became one of the defining pop icons of the 1980s with the album Private Dancer. Her life was chronicled in three memoirs, a biopic, a jukebox musical, and in 2021, the acclaimed documentary film Tina. In a statement on Wednesday night, her publicist, Bernard Doherty, said, Tina Turner, the queen of rock and roll, has died peacefully today at the age of 83 after a long illness in her home in Switzerland. With her, the world loses a music legend and a role model. So did you enjoy this lesson? If you did, make sure you subscribe because I have lots more lessons just like this one and new ones coming out every single week. And don't forget to download your free speaking guide where I share six tips on how to speak English fluently and confidently. You can download it from my website right here. And whenever you're ready, get started with your next lesson.